This is still the ballot 2023 and we're being joined live by Nicholas Oumere. He is a youth ambassador and a political scientist. And also we're being joined by Fine Face Dunanime. Uh, he is a, the executive director of Youth and uh, Environmental uh, Advocacy Center. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Uh, I'm going to start with you. Thank um, you for having me. All right, thank you, um, Fine Face. I'm going to start with you, Nick. Um, apparently, you came from outside the country to participate in this election because the last time I spoke with you, uh, you were outside of the country. Um, I'd like to first find out what happened at your polling unit and where exactly you voted. Okay, um, so I have not voted. Oh, you didn't. Um, my polling unit is our mama three, um, Ward three. And the polling, the election was supposed to take place at Umadara Cha Hall. Uh, however, yesterday morning, when everybody came outside to like the few people that came outside to come and vote, um, they were told that INEC had not made logistics to even come to the area. Turned down 2.30, 2.30 p.m., people started getting worried like, oh, it's almost 2.30, what's going on? Nobody still had come to the area. So we then saw um, a post that said INEC had shifted the election of some polling units in Imo State to tomorrow, which is today. Um, so it kind of gave us like a sense of calmness. Okay, maybe we would now be able to vote today. So it turns out this morning um, when I woke up, um, the next thing I'm hearing like, different discussions and agitations from different neighboring towns and saying, oh, results have been uploaded for them. So I just wanted to clarify, we have not voted in our local government area. A lot of um, surrounding places around us have not also voted because I took time since we were not voting yesterday. I took my time to go around to other areas to see if they were also affected, which they were. The only place that voted was the governor's polling unit. Which is? Um, um, um. Okay. It's interesting because you're telling me that you didn't vote, but you hear that results were made available for your polling unit? Yes. So um, for my polling unit specifically, the result still says not available. The second polling unit, which is, um, give me a second, the second polling unit, which is in the Our Mama Ward 4, which is literally 10 minutes walk away from our polling units, which we definitely know there was no election there, they've started uploading results that says APC has like a high number of 200, Labour Party has a number of two, PDP has a number of three. So we are just wondering where these 200 people came out from that we did not see them to vote. So even them themselves, like it's causing a lot of problems here because we are currently, everybody knows how the whole situation in the Southeast is, and now it's like when we are getting to the level of peace, the governor or whoever is behind this whole APC, Hulabalu, is now trying to wreck the peace that we've so much created because now this will cause another agitation from different factions, evil people will start taking advantage of it. And that's what we're trying to still control, hoping um, that INEC can see whatever results that have been posted. Because all these results that are posted, there's no polling unit agent that is signing it. There's no, um, nobody is signing it except for the INEC representative. And this number is like, if you check the handwriting, it's all on let, INEC let, portal. Let, let me, if let you me, check the let handwriting. Me bring you back. Let me bring you back. I'm sorry, Nicholas. Mm -hmm. let, let me bring you back. You're telling me that there were no INEC officials whatsoever because you're telling me at first that there was no logistic, uh, there were no logistic um, arrangements to bring INEC officials to your area. And so you didn't see an electoral officer. You saw no ad hoc staff. No electoral so, officer. Um, so the people from your community, were you able to go to the nearest INEC office or maybe Iraq Center to find out what was happening if you didn't vote at all and you saw no INEC officials? Yes, some of the elders of the community, because you know how they operate here, and you always like delegate the elders to go to the community. When they went there, the INEC people had told them that they were still coming. This was around 11 o'clock as of yesterday. They said they were coming. And then um, by 2.30, when the councillor for my um, local government um, had gone to a big center hall, that's, that, that center hall, um, Amchi, 
is um, the biggest center hall in my ward to just make a video to basically say that nobody came here and nobody had been here. It's 2.30, he called the time and um, showed the whole area. Then we went again and then that was when the whole publication and you know how this is the eastern side so a lot of people are not so privy to internet so the little ones that we see online is what we used to now know. There was a whole discussion of INEC, it's, on, it's online. INEC postponing some polling units in Imo State till the next day of which we heard that our polling unit was also affected. So we were waiting for today to come and vote. Hmm. Um, I must say that we spoke, uh, rather we listened to uh, the INEC chairman from the National Coalition Center um, a few minutes after noon and um, we had no um, information in regards to whether there would be elections today, whether um, there's a postponement and what areas would be listed. But we're hoping that at 6 p.m. when we do join the National Coalition Center, all of these questions will be answered. But let's put a pin there. I'm, I'm come to you, Fine Face. Fine Face, uh, social media um, is awash with videos and tweets and pictures coming from River State. Now, it's not news to the average, uh, you know, um, Nigerian um, how elections uh, turn out in River State. Unfortunately, it's not something that we should be happy about, but that's, it is what it is. Uh, but yesterday seemed to have taken a, d a deeper dive. Give us an idea, and where did you vote? Thank you for having me, and uh, good afternoon to everyone. Yeah, River State has always been a flashpoint and a hot spot when it comes to elections. And uh, Nigerian politics, of course, you always have the headquarters in River State. Well, I actually couldn't vote yesterday uh, because um, I had some other serious, uh, should I say, national assignments to perform in relation to the election. That is to cover it, monitor it, observe going around, you know, the units in the various local government area to see how it is going and reporting on letting people know what is happening in the various polling units and, of course, calling the authorities, uh, INEC, to the attention to areas where there are issues. So I actually sacrificed my one vote to do more critical work that will help the entire election process to be better and for Nigerians to have you know, information and uh, see how they can be able to use information to make the system better and be able to vote right. So that's what I did yesterday. I monitored and observed and reported from uh, Portaco, Tobiakmo, uh, city local government area, Ojibo, and working also with my network of uh, human rights defenders across the state and the Niger Delta. I was also getting on time and real time reports from various parts of the state mm -hmm. on what was happening. Let's start, with, let's, let's start units. with Obiakpo. I'm most interested in, you know, what happened in Obiakpo and, of course, the Equerio local government. And I, I saw some other pockets of violence, but I, I'm not sure, but I want to verify because you said you had, you know, soldiers, and when I say soldiers, I mean your um, people working with you in the field. Um, we saw a video of a, a man wearing a police officer's uniform running away with a ballot box. How true is this video? Because we also know that we live in a time and, uh, you know, a space where deep fakes are, um, you know, possible. And then, of course, the videos can be doctored. But how true is it that even security agents were seen, um, you know, trying to, one way or the other, disrupt the free, fair, and credible electoral process uh, in River State? Well, I, I also watched that video, but I can't outrightly confirm that video because I don't know I didn't I don't know the actual polling unit where that happened, but this was reported from River State. But you cannot rule that out the, of the possibility of what will happen when certain police officers are working to please their masters. Because you know what reduced violence to an extent in the current election in River State and even Nobia Paul, like other parts of the country, is the fact that we believe that the beavers was going to be able to make anything that has to do with talk grid, disruption of election process, useless. But what we now saw, you know, happened is that um, they look at an area where a candidate that is not the candidate they are supporting or working for is winning, then they destroy and disrupt the process so that the votes there cannot be counted for the person. That is what we saw, and that's what happened. You say you are in, in particularly interested in Obia, but there are about um, two incidences I can outrightly report, which, which I witnessed myself from Obiakpo yesterday. One is a violence incident, and the other one is uh, the 
you know, the process of the beef has not working to capture a potential voter. Well, the very first one I witnessed was um, somewhere in uh, Obiakbo, local government area, you know, Rumiko area, but I think uh, Unit 18, you know, uh, I think what two Unit 18 or so. So at that point, uh, people queued up to vote, and uh, we, we, had, we, we saw that uh, a senior government official, someone that has been prominent in government, came there and said, those who are not voting for a particular political party should leave the line. And those who wanted to vote for other parties became angry at, you know, the voting cost issue, knowing who he is and the security with him and stuff like that. So the people decided to stay away. That caused some issue that also led to the, the video you may have seen on social media, whereby, uh, a, a, you know, a particular, you know, a, 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 a potential voter leaving the units, complaining of how he was asked to leave because he was trying to vote for a particular presidential candidate whose name I don't want to mention. Mm. So I was at that unit and at that point when that happened. And then before then, I've been to the governor's uh, polling unit, you know, in Obiapo to mm. ensure that I am available to witness the voting of the governor. As at the time I got there, the governor was yet to be there and INEC officials were also yet to fully set up. So I left and I asked someone to call me when the governor arrives to vote. So when the governor arrived to vote, I was giving a call. At that time, I was at the Unit 18 where this incident happened. Hmm. So I drove from there to the governor's voting points. And I was there. I witnessed the governor trying to undergo the process of accreditation. And the beavers couldn't capture him. And that became the issue we broke from there at that point in time. So the governor had to leave. When he could not be accredited to vote, he had to leave. And about two to three hours later or thereafter, while I was still monitoring the other parts of the state, I heard on radio that the governor had eventually been accredited and he has voted that they called him back to come that the beavers was now working. Mm. So beavers fail in many areas and a lot of people couldn't vote. In fact, as at 10 p.m. last night, I was still on the field, you know, monitoring and witnessing the process of uh, INEC trying to, you know, conclude the voting process because the voters were so adamant that they told them if they don't conclude the process and paste the results on the world that they cannot leave. And they were like in a elbow stage until they completed the processes. So a lot of these things happen in many areas. And police were saying that uh, I heard the police talking about the fact that uh, at least two police officers were deployed in some on every polling unit. Well, mm -hmm. what I noticed as at 8.30 a.m. yesterday morning was that Police officers were at many of the police, I mean, at the polling units across Port Harcourt and its environs that I went to because mm -hmm. I left the house by seven, started checking where people would be voting and stuff like that. So I saw many police in some units, you can see up to six, you can see up to seven, you can see their van. They were on ground earlier than I you know, came. But when I stepped out of Port Harcourt to the uh, uh, nearby uh, uh, local government areas, you will see polling unit with over a thousand people, over two thousand people, without even one police officer. Mm. And those places that are along the road, you could see them coming with van monitoring. So the point here remains that police we have in Nigeria, from what we are told, there are just less than four hundred thousand police officers. And if you do the mathematics of putting two police uh, officer at one of the polling units, you will see that the, the number of police, when you minus those that are with politicians, you will see that they are not even, uh, you know, sufficient to. They are not even sufficient to be able to run, you know, the number of the number of polling units that we have across the country. So basically, they were at some places, but not everywhere, and that led to the fact that uh, we had some crisis in some areas, like in kind of local government area. Crisis were reported at two places. I learned a court, court guy invaded the polling unit to snatch the ballot paper, and it was gone down. I don't know whether it was the police yeah, that but that's not very clear. Yes, we, we had a we had a candidate from one of the political parties. Um, uh, he was running for House of Representatives in Kana and Golkana, if I'm not mistaken, and he did say that one of the major problems that they had to encounter was that. The, there was no ballot paper for the House of Representatives in Kana and Gokana. Um, he also talked about the fact that yeah. even the ones that they had voted on for the presidential uh, elections and for the Senate, um, it was doctored because they, they literally had videos showing people, uh, uh, INEC officials, writing and, you know, um, putting different figures on, you know, the result sheets and... Um, they complained about it, saying that, look, this, this is an outright disregard for the electoral process. Uh, we had him on the show yesterday, and um, he said he does have evidence uh, that the election uh, was rigged outrightly.
So it makes us really wonder. Um, well, basic. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, basically, you cannot rule that out because there are a lot of strong men in the electoral processes. There are those who are bent on rigging. And uh, what happened in River States uh, and some other parts of the state as well is that the, because of the failure of the beavers, even those who are in Port Harcourt, we are complaining that uh, you know there was no network on the beavers for them to can transmit and result electronically as uh, expected. Mm. So when that became an issue, so what do you expect from the interland, the, the rural areas? So those become an issue. And the moment the beavers failed, that gave them room for result manipulation. Mm. And as at this morning, I'm getting series of reports from across the state on how where all the results now at the collation center by the early hours of this morning and at the collation center that uh, results are allegedly being uh, manipulated uh, uh, you know you know people are manipulating the results and i was not uh, surprised to even hear this morning because going around port Harcourt yesterday it was like a tsunami a particular presidential candidate was winning almost in every polling unit but when the results are turning out by this morning, the briefs we are getting, although not confirmed by INEX, so we cannot announce the figure, mm. it's a different presidential candidate that is already sweeping the pool. So a lot of these things are happening at the collation center. And it, I it, think the INEC needs to take steps to ensuring that, uh, you know, the votes as uh, cast by the people are counted and the people get the person they want, you know, elected so that we don't have a kind of crisis across the country. Because such thing can lead to spontaneous, you know, protests from the mm. people who may think that their votes have been manipulated. And, and, and we, I don't want another, you know, June 11, I mean, uh, June, June 12, 12, you know, 1993 mm. to, to happen again. So I think they need to ensure that the integrity of the process is upheld in such a way that people who don't take the laws into their hands to take some actions that okay. may not be palatable for our nascent democracy. Let me come back to you, Nick. For an, for an election that was highly anticipated, for an election that... It took a lot of people, I mean, Nigerians did not necessarily wait for the NOA or governments or politicians to canvass for their votes. They themselves volunteered to, to you know, um, reach out to their peers. And I'm talking about whether they be young, middle-aged. Everybody seemed to have been, you know, ready for this election. And one would have hoped that INEC would be ready also for this election. But just like Fineface said, issues with the beavers. INEC at some point did tell us that these beavers did not necessarily need internet to function also there's been this public outcry not just for lagos state but a few other states including rivers of inex inability to upload results I've, I've seen videos of ad hoc staff saying they didn't send us the code or they've they've said to us you cannot upload the results but the question is um who's they and uh, just as i said earlier on why is that not the priority of inex as opposed to wanting to tell us about coalition instead of telling us or addressing these issues? Yes, um, I believe INEC is very much compromised. Um, I say this because there is no way that you send polling agents or you send um, ad hoc staffs to a unit. You first came before the election, you made us know that this um, Beavers machines did not need internet, of which some other polling units were able to upload their um their results without internet because there's an offline um feature in that same beavers machine should in case your internet happens to flow you're supposed to upload it and the moment it's it's sealed at that point so the moment it just connects to the internet the rest is just for the service to take up now um why i said i believe iron neck is compromised it may not be at the top level but if your whole organization is very much compromised and the top level will also take it. In state levels where we are seeing now that places where election did not um, take place and we're seeing results uploaded on the INEC portal, it's definitely from the staff of INEC. Now, in different states like Rivers now, we heard as of last night, we were seeing videos on um, possible threats of people saying, oh, they came back um, and they just told the, the senior men in the um, in the electoral offices just told them to leave, and the rest was history. Now, um, also, I think Nigerians have it much. I think if we're to be pushing the blame, I would blame more Nigerian staff of INEC because also them they also let themselves compromise. You go to different other locations where people are actually playing politics and tricks, trying to switch votes, trying to leave without actually um, um, uploading the results. 
but you're still saying that, oh, you were asked to bring the results back. You were asked not to upload the results there. Um, I was happy because a lot of Nigerians this time around were able to stay within their polling units and actually make sure that all, all of their votes were um, submitted. It was painful to see that, yes, some INEC staff were still stubborn. I don't know why you're stubborn to push the will of the people to INEC, but um, it was very sad to see that some security operatives were also aiding the um, evacuation of these INEC staff without doing what they were supposed to do. I'm really looking forward to see how this whole electoral process will play out because there's a lot of discrepancies in every part of this electoral system, starting from the VIVAS to the INEC staff to even the electoral system itself. There are some polling units where there are 700 um, voters and then you they, they were given only 600. What else are you supposed to do about the 100? They mm. came on the plan that, oh, it's by by law the voter the voter the ballot papers are never are never finished so that's why you bring the less i mean if you ask INEC now they'll probably blame logistics but then the president assured us that all um all um requirements needed by INEC were already fulfilled funds were already distributed even the cbn as of last week when INEC was complaining that oh they had issues with the whole cash policy, the CBN made assurances to INEC that they were going to um, remit them with the said money. And we also heard where INEC said they had received the money. So where are we getting it all wrong right now is a question for the, um, Mr. Mahmoud, because he has to explain what all these um, different states are facing. Mm. Back to you, Fine Face. Um, in Lagos, and, I, I, and you have also made uh, mention of what happened in the governor's local government area, where also a known government official showed up at a polling unit to tell people who to vote for. And if they were not going to vote for that person, they, they needed to leave the polling unit. And that same thing happened here in Lagos. Now, um, we saw um, the guy in charge of the Lagos Parks and Management in a particular video posted by a voter telling people, in fact, threatening people in Lagos that if they did not vote for a party that he supported, and he called, you know, referred to tribes, you know, um, that if they're here, they should go back to their homes and not vote. Where sh what should INEC be doing in this regard? We've not seen any arrests. We've not heard anything. I mean, um, there are people who might be perpetrating acts of violence who come on a motorcycle with guns shooting. I mean, we saw some videos of, you know, in Ikorodu where um, people who were unmasked were shooting directly at voters with guns, guns that normally you'd not see with the average, an average Nigerian, but these people were wielding guns. What should INEC be doing? Because it's almost 24 hours and we've not seen any arrest, especially for those who are known especially for that man um, who is in the government of Governor Wiki, why are these people still walking free? Well, I think the people are walking free because those who are supposed to act have failed to do the need for. And I know that uh, INEC being the electoral umpire that witnessed when some of these things happen, happen in their presence, they are those who are supposed to raise the alarm officially. And I believe that INEC actually partner with the security operatives to prosecute this election. And if that is the case, when this kind of thing happened, I think they needed to activate their relationship with the police to make arrests and take such people into custody. Because I know quite well that if steps are not taken, this kind of thing will continue and will remain part of our electoral system. And again, why we I now focus on the election? I think also that uh, the collaboration that exists between INEC and the security operative should also come to play here. By then, tracing those videos and getting people and someone that have made some of these uh, comments and behave this way, you know, arrest them without having to wait for INEC to prompt them. Because a situation whereby you see a fragrant, uh, you know, uh, 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 abuse of the electoral process in such a way that you can ask someone who was supposed to vote, not to vote because you have a particular candidate the person should vote for. That is not right. That is the violation of the rights of that person to ex exercise, you know, uh, uh, his will, his conscience through the ballot box. Because, but I think that they need to take steps to arrest people like this and not wait for INEC to be from them. The security should do it, do more to take steps to, you know, bring some of these people into custody. I remember in River State, uh, you know, last week leading to the election, um, a, a House of Reps, uh, you know, a, 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 a man, I think Ephraim Mosey, because his name is already in the internet, is on the internet, 
he posted a video that was he was making some violent comments regarding how they should shoot some INEC officials and what have you. He was arrested and taken to court and is currently, you know, in detention at the correctional center, you know, awaiting trial. So the point here remains that we shouldn't just wait until people take some of these actions that may really harm people. It's not until even when you carry gun off. People that have made this kind of comment and taking this kind of action should be taken into custody, should be arrested and prosecuted. That is the only way we can sanitize our system and for that to serve as deterrent to other people who may be nursing those kind of behavior that will make other people not to can exercise their franchise or express their will through the ballot box because there is no body that is good enough to lead the other person without the consent of that person. And the consent of that person must come to the ballot box and the person must be freely be able to express it. And when it is expressed, people should also allow the votes to count in such a way that, uh, you know, the person we can be proud of either losing gallantly or winning gallantly in an election. Still staying with, uh, you know, enforcing the law here. I, I made mention of the fact that law enforcement agents were seen. I, might, I, felt, I failed to mention to you that there was a law enforcement officer uh, where the Lagos Parks and Management um, head was making these threats. Uh, and I'm guessing also law enforcement officers were flanking the, the, the aid of the governor, somebody who works in the government of uh, Governor Wike, when he was making these threats, these are law enforcement officers. So I'm posing a question right now that you may not necessarily be in the position to answer, but of course, we're having a conversation. How many of our law enforcement agents understand the law? Because you cannot be an, a law enforcer if you do not have access to what's in the law or even understand it. So. How do these people enforce a law that they have no clue about? How many of these people know what the Electoral Act, as amended, actually says about these crimes? I think they, they know and they understand the law because they go for training once in a while. I know that they are not receiving enough training as possible, but they receive training that enables them to understand the law. And oftentimes, too, the media has been helping and supporting the process of the development of Nigerian democracy and electoral process. There is hardly any hour that the media is not providing a platform for experts, analysts, and commentators to speak about some of these things. Lawyers are also sensitizing, so they know what to do and what not to do. In fact, even if you are not as educated when it has to do with understanding the law, the moment someone does something that is not in line with what us to do, something in you will tell you that what this person has done is wrong, mm. and that person is supposed to be picked up. And when the person is picked up, you commence the process of investigation, and investigation will help to unravel the, uh, the crime that that person would have committed and the sections of the law that the person would have violated, and then you take action on that person. Just like we are talking about this now, we watched Mr. President voted in his hometown yesterday. And when Mr. President voted, he displays his voter, his, uh, his ballot You literally paper asked my that, next question, because I was going to say that the president, <laughs> yes, the Senate yeah. president, these people flouted a particular rule in the Electoral Act, showing us who they voted for. Are these yeah. people above the law, or is this, the, is this just the modus operandi in this country? It's, 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 it's a disturbing question. <laughs> in, in a system where we try to adhere to the law, where we rule of law operates, mm. I believe that um, at this point in time, I know Mr. President is enjoying immunity, but uh, whatever it is, last week, um, I think was it the EFCC or the police that told us that uh, they are investigating some governors over certain comments they have made and certain actions they have taken, despite the immunity that they enjoy, that they are investigating them. I am surprised that 24 hours after Mr. President voted and displayed his uh, voters, uh, I mean, his ballot paper, which clearly indicated you know, the fact that uh, he has voted for a particular candidate will violate sections of the Electoral Act that the, no comment has come from the police that uh, maybe Mr. President is being investigated and maybe when he leaves office, action will be taken. But I think uh, that was violation of the law. And it is only when we that are at the, you know, at the helm of affairs, people that are at the helm of affairs, are living by example that other people will borrow a leave from them and be able to make the system to work because we are talking about America, we are talking about the UK and other parts of the world today. I think people made it to be so. And we have to join hand collectively to see how we can make our own system work. I have not heard that an American president voted any day and people get to know whom he voted for when the law says it's a you know, secret uh, you know, ballot uh, system. So I think it was a violation of the law. And that is what some other people that are below the, the, the ladder are emulating and causing crisis everywhere. So I think they need to take steps to let people learn from them so that we don't have a system whereby 
the people at the helm of affairs don't obey the law that they made. And, and that takes us to some of the definitions of law that John Austin have said that uh, you know, the law as, uh, sees the law as an instrument of uh, you know, oppression made by the superior for the inferiors to obey. We, we have to make the law something that all of us we obey so that our system will be better and people can learn from us. Today, from when Anek was speaking this morning before they postponed to 6 p.m., about um, electoral uh, uh, commissioners from like six African countries or thereabouts are in Nigeria. What are they here to do? They are not only here to observe, but they are also here to learn. And they will learn from every process. And this is part of what they should take home on what is being done. Mm. I know quite well that they are going to filter what they get from here and then take in the one that is better. But we should give them more good information about our system than what we are actually you know, carrying out. Mm. Interesting. Let me come back to you, um, Nicholas. Uh, for a person who does not live in Nigeria, you have obviously witnessed uh, elections where you are. I don't know if you have um, you know, dual citizenship and you can participate in the elections in the United States. But um, if you have ever witnessed the elections or participated, uh, I mean, because the whole world watches when the US or the UK has its elections, um, what are the few things that you've observed that we could learn from? Because you see, I, sometimes I'm a bit tired to sound like a broken record because I feel like... Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.